front of our camera, sitting at the tail of the group now as they start the climb of the Alp. 14 kilometres to the top. Now, it's about here where Marco Pantani used to launch his attacks. I'm not sure that will happen, but look at the acceleration at the front as they scur scurry now to grab wheels and going to the front is Rabobank immediately. Well, they're trying to set it up for Michael Bogert. Bogert is in about fifth position right now. Armstrong up onto the wheel there of the man he wants to follow, Jan Ulrich, at the back. This is difficulty. This is pain. This is one of the riders from Onse, and I can't believe it's on, on it's Balocchi, who's under difficulty right now. They're moving him forward. Francois Simon is going backwards. Armstrong has maybe been playing the incredible poker game today by sitting at the back of the group and let everybody else do the work. On the front now, it's Andreas Cloden. He's on the wheel of Ayala. Ulrich, everybody's moving forward. A lot of riders want to attack. Oh, look at the face of Ulrich here. And Armstrong has found his wheel, locked straight on to the German. This is trouble now for Francois Simon, but he knows now he's got to ride and not lose 17 minutes. Oh, it's a Chavanel. Sorry, it's Chavanel that's gone as he loses ground. But everybody now is cracking big time here. Kevin Livingston just popped, he's done his job for the day, and all these men here are the workers. This man, number 57, is Grisha Neerman. He was trying to set it up for Bogard. Bogard is there on the right-hand side. Now, this is the big team coming forward. These are the boys of Lance Armstrong. This is Rubiera right now with Armstrong in second position. They are accelerating. Is this, this is why they brought the climbers onto the US Postal Service team. They knew that Armstrong was strong in the mountains and put two big climbers alongside him. I don't believe I'm seeing this. Armstrong Armstrong has been at the back for the whole day, and Ulrich is in difficulty now. Well, I don't think Ulrich believes it either. Armstrong has given everybody, and maybe that was the plan to give everybody the impression, he was in trouble. And now Rubiero, who's looked after him all day, has put him at the front of Alcduez. A good reply there by Ulrich, and this is going to be a mano o mano now, and it's all happening before the climb has really started. Now watch out, Kivalev is the man there in the coffee dish jersey. He's the man who also will be thinking about getting himself a yellow jersey before we go to the end of the mountain stages. Rubiero is doing the job that he was signed up for by US Postal Service and that is to be the pilot fish they've lost Kevin Livingston but now they've signed up two absolutely brilliant climbers, Rubiera and Oroerto Heras, Armstrong now for the first time today is looking comfortable he's come into his terrain Vinokurov, boom, he's out of the group right now, Telecom are losing their men one after the other, they are dropping like flies, this is where you have to race alone and Armstrong's gone a big move by Lance this and no reply coming at all from Jan Ulrich Ulrich has got no answer to this acceleration by Lance Armstrong. So Armstrong has been holding everything under those legs till the last climb. And now he has launched the attack. He wants to win it out, Duez. We knew that. We were just not too sure he had it in him. He has. He will thank Rubiero, who has completely sacrificed himself. He took a look straight into the eyes there of Jan Ulrich and said, well, here I go. Are you coming or not? And the answer is not. This is what Armstrong was waiting for today. He's let Telecom ride on the front for the whole of the stage. He let them deaden their legs of all of the climbers except one. The one climber in this bike race is Lance Armstrong. If Ulrich had had any, fate, any eyes in behind those glasses, he would have seen Armstrong looking straight into them and saying, right, if you want to win this Tour de France, if you want to take it away from me, follow this wheel right now. You've got to be so strong, Phil, to attack from the front. He showed everybody where he was and just accelerated away. He's danced now he'd said he wanted to win this stage at the Alpe d'Huez and this is going to cause serious problems it reminds me of Hotakam last year because on the way up to Hotakam there was a man off the front of the bike race his name was Ochoa this time it's a different name it's Laurent Roux and this man here thought he was going to win the Tour de France today Jan Ulrich but he's fighting Armstrong on his own terrain at the moment he's losing well, Ulrich is hurt here, he's going to have to hope he can recover a little bit and answer it later because he's got no answer right now. As we look here at the other riders who are being left, this is Beneteau, I think, and Francois 5.30 is the official gap now as Rubiera, who launched uh, into orbit, his team captain, has now said, that's it for me, I'm just going to climb the Alp and hope that Lance makes it. Number one, well, you can't say more than that right now. Lance Armstrong is taking back time on everyone except uh, Laurent Roux. Look, Look at, at the gap of 4.40 already. Armstrong will contact Roux in the next two kilometres or so. Unbelievable. This has been done before by Lance Armstrong. I've watched him all day. I've never seen him ride at the pack 
at the tail end of a pack as he did. It's a very dangerous thing to do. These are the men who want to follow him. There is Christophe Moreau, Jan Ulrich, Joseba Beloki. These are the men who are expecting to climb well today. Roberto Lyseka is in there from Uscatel Uscadi. They couldn't follow the accelerations of the Texan. He has played a magnificent tactical maneuver today. He sat at the back of the group. He suffered in front of the television cameras because all the other team managers have televisions in the cars. They will have been talking to Ulrich all day and say, oh, Armstrong's having a bad day. He has fooled everybody in the Tour de France. Including me, I have to say today, Paul, because I never expected Armstrong to do this. He has ripped the field apart and he is climbing now to the summit of the Alp. And at the speed he is climbing, he is going to catch Laurent Lou and blow him away. And what is Jan Ulrich thinking right now? This man looks so cool all day. His earpiece, his radio is unplugged, it's dangling down. He is now totally committed to try. There's already a 30 second gap between Ulrich and Armstrong. All Ulrich can do right now is ride at his own pace. He's not a great climber. He will climb on absolute power and try and limit his losses. He's looking over right now. He's used all of his team. His team have been blown away. They've done a great job for him today. He was hoping for some help from Belocchi. Belocchi couldn't move forward, so all of the pacemaking in this group is going to have to come from the man in the white jersey as champion of Germany. That is Jan Ulrich. This is Laurent Jalabert. He, too, is in difficulty at the back of the group. He is being tailed off. The man who will probably probably take the jersey at the end of the day, Francois Simon, he's off the back of this group by a couple of minutes already. Jalabert with the red jersey as the most aggressive bike rider, he will just try and survive over these mountains of the Tour de France. He has two stage wins under his belt, he has no hopes really of taking the overall win at the end of the race, but I reckon he's having a magnificent tour. But the man today who's done the great job of fooling absolutely everybody, including us, Phil, we've watched him so many times, and I honestly thought he was suffering. I think that was the tactics they were adopting latest time check four minutes 19 behind the lone musketeer today as we're seeing here Kivalev now struggle a little bit uh, but this isn't Zatienz it'll be who's now here and uh, the Cofferty's boys spread over the mountain Didier Roos the champion of France they must wonder what happened here everything has just been blown apart as number 194 there is the bold Axel Merckx now they we're seeing the at the uh, Marcus Serrano or Serrano rather has gone as well for Anse Belocchi is still up the road uh, somewhere this is uh, Haras who's now gone Haras is in trouble that uh, number 44 there will be Vladimir Belli the balding uh, little Italian climber they are all out of it now, and the Kelme rider here is their captain, Boteru, who did so well last year as we steadily move towards the men who are still surviving. But none of them are surviving quite as well as Armstrong. Well, that was an unbelievable move, I have to say. He'll be saying a big thank you to Jose Luis Rubiera. Rubiera, in the last one and a half kilometers, moved Armstrong to the front of that group that was flying along under the pressure of Team Telecom. And as soon as he looked into the face of Jan Ulrich and saw there were silver problems, he then decided to accelerate. He's eating into the advantage of the lone leader at the moment, Laurent Roux, at three minutes and 34 seconds. There's been an attack going off the front here. Gonzalez de Galdiano is the man leading the chase behind Armstrong right now but this race is going to be magnificent three minutes 40 the gap to armstrong 427 and now to the group ulrich and at 10 kilometers to go for this man he'll have no idea what is happening behind him can he hang on just 10 kilometers to go it's going to be very difficult because on a climb like this when you've led the bike race phil for since the sixth kilometer of racing you have not got very much energy left in your body and right now he's going to lose seconds every pedal rev that he turns over on the slope to the Alp d'Huez. The pink jerseys of the supporters there shouting for Jan Ulrich but they may now realise that Ulrich is in difficulty. He is probably the most talented bike rider on the circuit but just now he's being absolutely, absolutely annihilated by Lance Armstrong. There's two minutes almost between Armstrong and Ulrich on the road and he's eating into the lead of Laurent Roux. Armstrong is ripping the Tour de France apart today. It's a favourite tactic by Lance to do this. If you've got the legs, this climb of Otakam last year was so similar. He destroyed the field and won the Tour on that day. 
Many will ask, is he about to do the same? There will not be a yellow jersey waiting at the top this time. There will certainly be a stage victory if he can catch the man in front, but he will have closed up on all of those riders who escaped from him by half an hour, and he will have got ahead by all of the stars of the Tour, the, the expected favourites, and that's what's most important to Armstrong today. And now an attack again. I think it's Gonzalez de Galeano has launched a second attack. Well, the Once riders trying to leap off the front, but they're actually just playing again. It's Igor Gonzalez de Galeano who's trying to get off the front of this group. There's no reaction at all coming from Ulrich. We're looking now at Igor Gonzalez de Galeano. In fact, he attacked, he's been caught, he's gone again. And the gap now between Armstrong and Ulrich is one and a half minutes. And he's losing ground. And that's Ulrich I'm talking about, not Armstrong. He is flying over the Alp today and he's boring down on the leader. His gap now between this rider in the front and Armstrong, two minutes 40. And it was 6.25 not many kilometres ago. Well, this man here, Phil, at the moment is probably not riding very much faster than about 11 miles an hour, while in the back group here, Armstrong is probably riding closer to 15 miles an hour, which is absolutely remarkable. You check out here the pedalling cadence of Lance Armstrong, and that is where he's got his power from over the last few years. He's learned and trained specifically at this, and even on a mountain pass, he's ticking those legs over at around about 90 to 95 RPM. That is a little trick he actually picked up from Miguel Indurain. Indurain went across several times to do the ride for the Roses, a race that Lance Armstrong organises for his Lance Armstrong Foundation for, testi for Testicular Cancer and in that time they've spent a lot of periods talking about time trialling and about climbing as well and I think that Lance Armstrong today is giving us a superior demonstration on the art of keeping the gears low. Look now at Jan Ulrich, his legs are turning a lot slower than Armstrong's, he's using a much bigger gear. Gonzalez de Galeano caught again after a second attempt to break away as we're still looking here at Kivilev the man who is second overall in the Tour de France and is a reasonable climber and could still provide us with the problem for Lance Armstrong but it's hard to say right now if anybody is a problem to Lance Armstrong because he is riding so well as the race now continues to close down a little bit first time I've seen Leonardo Pipoli in the race and that was him with the balding head Bogart just passing through our picture there and this rider here is Montgomery Sven Montgomery he's a Swiss rider and on good form and proving that to us now by being in this rather select little group well look at those beautiful legs of Lance Armstrong with the American flag on the left and that and on the right and what more enthusiasm and encouragement does he need now because Armstrong is now 235 of catching the leader on the road well it's amazing it's a huge multinational crowd out on the roads of the Alpe d'Huez today but the American flags will be flying very proud with this performance at the moment two and a half minutes he's pulled back already four and a half minutes on the man leading the bike race Laurent Rooks Laurent Rooks now will know that there's been a major reaction behind he will hope that he can survive but because of the speed of this man right now he will not look at the front forks there on Armstrong's bike they were very smart indeed he's actually adopted a very special mountain bike today to use with very low weight involved there and in fact some very interesting forked blades on the front looking back to the chase group here a select one it is too with Ulrich is still not setting the pace and following wheels uh, Moreau is the rider behind Ulrich Bilocki is the other rider but they've all been put on the back burner now because Armstrong is doing in the Alps what he did in the Pyrenees a year ago he is writing them all out of the Tour de France and they can't do a thing about it he is just too good as Ulrich here looks so strong over the Glande on the Madeleine this is the man now he won't even know what time of day it is or even where he is he is so tired he's hanging on he's just got to survive from that group of Ulrich two other riders have been dropped we've seen two attacks from Gonzalez de Galdiano he has now been left behind by that group of Jan Ulrich and Roberto Lyseca the small climber from the Uscatel Uscadi team Armstrong getting the time check from the board there the time check will tell him he's two and a half minutes behind that man on the front that is Laurent Roots three and a half minutes behind is the team the group here of Jan Ulrich Ulrich now getting to the easier flatter section of Alpe d'Huez he can use his power right now to try and pull himself closer to Armstrong but Armstrong is putting in a serious blow he's opening up a minute and a half at the moment on Jan Ulrich well at the moment he's pegged because that's been like that now for a kilometer of climbing so maybe Ulrich after the sudden attack by Armstrong 
is recovering a little bit and might well come to the good in the second half of the climb. This often happens with climbers. They can't respond to attacks and lift their game up. They need to do it steadily. And Ulrich might be coming back into this. Ulrich will ride now at his own pace. He uses a huge gear. The middle part of Alp Duez is fairly flat, I suppose, compared to the other gradients before we get up to the summit. Once they reach around about five kilometers to go, it kicks up again then, and it is very difficult. This is Laurent Rooks right now, and he knows what is happening behind him. He'll have the information coming from his team car. He will know that he's being chased by the captain of this Tour de France, the leader in the race, the man who wants to win it for the third year in succession, Lance Armstrong. The pain is on his face right now. For a few moments ago, there was a smile there. He felt he had a chance with seven minutes but now that seven minutes has absolutely been wiped off the board it's two minutes and 30 seconds over Armstrong he's just got to hope he can survive but I don't think he can no I don't think he can either we're looking here at the hands of Armstrong as he gets a grip of those handlebars and his gain is fast pedaling cadence here so different uh, to the other bike riders on the tour this is the way Johan Brunel has concentrated his training on Armstrong he just turns those pedals around at around about a hundred revs per minute and he is gaining with every pedal rev Igor de Gonzalez de Galdiano has now been blown away we're looking at a select group of five riders there the Lockie third last year in the Tour de France Ulrich second Morrow fourth they are the riders and I think Osco Sevilla is also there for Kelme well, these men are just going to sit on the tail of Jan Ulrich right now. Ulrich will set the tempo, which is comfortable for himself, but he's using an absolutely huge gear. One minute and 25 seconds is the deficit Lance Armstrong has on Laurent Roux right now. He is absolutely eating into the lead of the lone Frenchman. He will catch him within five kilometers to go to the summit. And I feel certain right now, unless anything happens to Armstrong, he's going to run out the winner at Alpe d'Huez. He'd said before the start he wanted to win here. He always comes up on time for his rendezvous. All of the great winners of the Tour de France win at Alpe d'Huez. It is the shrine, the mecca of the race, of world cycling indeed. It used to be the domain of the Dutch, but now just about everybody with a fine pair of racing legs is getting in on the act. And Armstrong can join some of the finest names in the sport if he can win here. Only one man has ever managed to win here before and go on to win the Tour de France, and that was Fausto Coppi back in 1952. He is hoping today, Armstrong, to once again write his name into the history books. He might not have known a lot about the history of cycling before he came here to Europe, but now he certainly does because his name is nearly in nearly all of those books right now. The French would love this man to survive. He's been the hero of the day today. He attacked after six kilometers, built up a huge lead over the rest of the field. At one stage, they were 13 and a half minutes in front of the pack, but he's now being hunted down by the man who wears number one. Lance Armstrong, well... <laughs> You can't come up with enough superlatives for the performance of this man. He's almost died. He's looked death in the face with that testicular cancer. He's fought his way back. He's fought his way against the pressure of the press that have really tried to assassinate him. They've followed him for two years since he took the win in 1999. He's shut all of that out, prepared himself for today, and he's floating up this mountain. Phil, another time check coming in. 58 seconds. Well, this is moments ago where the leader passed through. There's an American flag there now. On the right, the Lone Star flag. And also, we've got Spanish flags, German flags. They're all waving now at the American as he cuts through the crowd here. He is now 58 seconds behind being in the lead on today's stage of the Tour de France. The Ulrich group is dropping back. This is unbelievable, the way the rocking and rolling of the shoulders here. Back to Ulrich Stroop as he looks over some help. I don't think there's anybody here capable now of giving him any help. Well, there's no pressure at all. You know, Ulrich is absolutely suffering. His team went out with a plan today, and the gamble was to deaden the legs of all of the climbers. He wants to put them into difficulty, and he probably thought that he would make Lance Armstrong suffer. I think Armstrong did suffer over that first mountain. I'm not sure that he's that good a poker player. He was in difficulty, but the first mountain stage of any big tour, it is difficult when you hit the first mountain. Ulrich now is in difficulty himself. The tables have been absolutely turned in this Tour de France. 
the big man from Germany rode the Giro d'Italia this year to prepare for this moment, but he's having a hard time in the high mountain passes of the Alps. This man is not. Where's number one? He's won the Tour in 99, he won it in 2000, and he's now laying the foundations to try and win it again. But he has to make up an awful lot of time on the men in front of him. One of those men is Andre Kivilev. Armstrong started the day almost 14 minutes behind Kivilev, and he'll slowly have to eat into that. He started the day 31 minutes behind uh, Francois Simon. It's going to be a big battle, but with performances like this, he's got to go on to win the Tour. Seven kilometers to go, and it's not going to happen today for Laurent Roux. Armstrong is closing rapidly on him now. The American flags are flying high here. You get some idea of the speed of Armstrong when a, a guy can run alongside him. Further back by over two minutes now, the help for Jan Ulrich, the German champion from his fans. This is a real battle of the Tour de France today amongst these riders. Oscar Sevilla got, tries to hang on, then comes Balocchi, then comes Moreau. These are the only riders left in with a chance now. One of these riders will win the Tour de France. And I think we're all beginning to wonder and think that it'll be the man in front. Absolutely remarkable. Ulrich now must be thinking, what have I done to my team? What have I done to my body? We've pushed since the start of the climbs today at the Col de la Madeleine. We've pushed over the Col de Glandon and we've set this up for Armstrong. He is not very far behind the lone leader, Laurent Roux, right now. He's almost into his shadow. As we look back, there's not very much more than 20 seconds. The catch is going to happen at six kilometers from the finish. There is Armstrong. Look ahead. You'll see the great, brave, the affable Laurent Roux, but he's not going to win at Alpe d'Huez. Lance Armstrong is now. Look at the crowd here. The German flags even cheering on Armstrong. Then the Americans now as he makes his way to the catch. Feel sorry for this man. He's been simply brilliant today. And let's hope he can survive to take second on the Alpe because that would be a considerable performance. But this is the moment that will please American fans the bridge of 6 minutes 25 seconds to zero has taken Lance Armstrong a little matter of just 5 miles absolutely unbelievable he's on the tail now of Laurent Roux maybe a word of encouragement but not he's concentrated he wants to win he wants to win at the summit of this giant of the Alps he loves to write his name into the history books he's won at the summit of Sestriere he's won at the summit of Otakam and right now Laurent Roux has been literally blown away we have seen some sensational exhibition of strength on Alp Duez. I can't recall one like this when a leader has gone past a tiring man in that manner. We've seen the escapades of Marco Pantani. He's just flown away by himself. But today, Armstrong gave them all a big start and he's ripped them apart. And now he's free as a bird to fly to the summit and to win the most romantic stage of the Tour. He's won before stage of the Tour de France, but I think this will be his best. This is one that he wanted. He wanted to get his name into the history books. He wants to win here at Alpe d'Huez and then go on to win the Tour. You know, this is absolutely magnificent. This is panache. This is banging the hand on the table and saying I'm the strong man I'm the climber and I'll come out again and I'll win the time trial as well he's had so many detractors in the French press over the last couple of years but this kind of performance is panache this is heroic this is what the Tour de France is all about and that's what this man's life is all about well just look at the continuing pedaling rate of him now this is the village of Wes and now we have three miles to the summit and that's a long way to climb for a lot of tired bodies on the mountain today this is the encampment of the French and the Dutch by the way and they're seeing an American go through first and it's just look at the speed of those motorbikes as we're looking down on what is the chase group aiming now to pick up Lauren Roux and I for one hope they don't because he's been such a hero today even the Swedish flags are flying and there are no Swedes in the race well they're enjoying the Tour de France 21 seconds is already the deficit of Laurent Roux on Lance Armstrong a minute 46 over Jan Ulrich who's recovering again we're going to a slightly flatter part of this very long difficult 14 kilometer climb to Alpe d'Huez in fact it looks now as if the Kelme rider has popped off the back Oscar Sevilla he is away now it's leaving these are the three men who were second third and fourth in the Tour de France previously and at the moment they are miles behind Lance Armstrong the pink jersey is Joseba Belocchi the blue jersey is the man who won the opening prologue Christ Christophe Moreau and the man on the front who is now actually suffering like a dog is Jan Ulrich the German well this is amazing there's every reason that we could see the order of finish 
at the top of Alpe d'Huez to be the exact order of the final classification of the Tour de France last year now as again Armstrong just continues to race up and down the Alps in this marvellous crowd here cheering him all of the way many of them listening to it on radio before he comes to them I wonder if those were the Dallas Cowboys out there on the slopes of Alpe d'Huez today trying to encourage Lance Armstrong to victory. This man here is called the Poursuivant, but he's not the chaser. He's the defeated on the slopes of the Alpe today. 41 seconds. His advantage is absolutely crumbling, but Ulrich is actually starting to slowly creep back towards the lead of Lance Armstrong. One minute and 40 seconds. Number one is the man's name coming over the race radio at the moment. One is the number of Lance Armstrong, the winner of last year. This man is going through all kinds of hell on his bike. He's led the race from the sixth kilometre. He thought and dreamed that he could win, but today he will not. Five kilometres to the summit for Lance Armstrong now. He's got already 204 under those wheels today. We thought he looked shaky for most of them. He's proved us all absolutely wrong. He was waiting for the Alp. And as you can see, there's an awful lot of Americans here who have come to watch the attack of Lance Armstrong today. Before we came on to the air, they said, who do you think is going to win? And I have to con confess, we said Armstrong. But we've sort of lost their faith in ourselves halfway through. Well, he certainly was suffering over those early climbs, but he is not suffering at all right now. His shoulders much higher up than they were in the first climb of the day. His pedaling cadence is still absolutely absolutely perfect it's like a metronome it's ticking by every second that he wants it to he set his pace here at around about 95 rpm virage numero 5 the fifth corner to the summit but the next corners are very long ones very long apart difficult climb here for this man Laurent Roux he's suffering he's just trying to stay at the front of the bike race this is a day he will remember for many days to come at the moment he's being breathed down his neck by Jan Ulrich and that very select group of Bilocchi Moro and I think Roberto Lyseca has just been left behind 51 seconds Ulrich is coming up behind him he's going to hang on to a high finish anyway because the riders who are coming up are also being dropped by the groups in turn there's only three of them now are making the return I think Sevilla's got back on yes he has so there are four riders now coming up behind Laurent Roux but well, there's no doubt who's going to win the stage and it's going to be Lance Armstrong well, another time check coming through right now. One minute and 50 seconds to the Jan Ulrich group as we look at this man who today has mounted a very special mountain bike, a very light machine with very special gears as well. He's riding as if he was programmed for this stage, and I think he was. You know, he trained immediately after the Tour of Switzerland, Phil. He left by helicopter to go straight to San Moritz. He trained in San Moritz until the Wednesday before the Tour de France began. And anybody who knows anything about altitude training knows that 10 or 12 days after you come down from altitude you are still reaping the benefit and he is doing that right now he is floating up this climb to the same altitude that he spent 10 days at after he left the tour of switzerland in san moritz i've never seen a cyclist in the history of the, my tours de france anyway and this is number 29 pedal such a low gear with such efficiency as he climbs up the alp and there's a little support from a supporter of this rider who broke away after six kilometers today and he is four kilometers from the top and what a breakaway that would be great performance by this man you cannot take away anything from the performance of laurent rooks to go out on an attack when you know the stage is going to be 209 kilometers facing 125 miles in the saddle it is just so difficult ulrich moves forward now he wants to put some time between himself and Joseba Bilocchi. it looked as if sevilla has recovered and come back to the group Christophe Moreau is in fourth place. The kilometres are now ticking by for Armstrong and they're ticking away very quickly. Four kilometres to go to the summit. If he lifts his head up to the right-hand side, he will see all the clouds of Alpe d'Huez. These are scenes on Alpe d'Huez. Now we've entered the barrier section here, just under four kilometres to the summit. This is the area where Fabio Paro was once in serious trouble from the crowd. And so since then, they've barriered the road off. But it takes away a little bit of the atmosphere, but at least it makes for a safe arrival of the American champion today. 
Lance Armstrong destroying the Tour de France on the first day in the mountains, as he did a year ago. He is still accelerating here, and still in second place just is Laurent Roux. Now, he may well just hang on, even if uh, I don't really think so. I don't think he will. I think he will may find himself getting caught there. He's only got 30 seconds advantage over Jan Ulrich's group right now, and Ulrich is pegging him back very slowly but surely, but Ulrich is having a very difficult time. The Ulrich group now is down to three men, Joseba, Balocchi and Christophe Moreau. The distance between Lourou and Jan Ulrich is 20 seconds we're getting there. And the GC, well, it's going to be a very strange day because I think we will still find at the top of the leaderboard a fairly unknown name amongst the favourites, and it should really be Francois Simon because he started the day almost half an hour ahead of Lance Armstrong. It could well be Kivalev will be second, but the way the race is unfolding just now, Armstrong will have climbed himself probably back up into third place at the end of the day. Well, at the moment, Kivilev is riding just over three minutes behind Armstrong on the road. And uh, I would suspect he'll be four down by the time he gets to the line. Kivilev is going to be a very difficult man to get rid of. He started the day around about 14 minutes ahead of Lance Armstrong. But I'm sure by the time we get up to Paris, that will have been reversed to probably a 14-minute deficit for Kivilev. This man now in the silent part of the Alpe d'Huez right now. The barriers are up alongside him. He can ride safely up towards the finishing line. And he's now just hoping to conserve as much of his advantage over Jan Ulrich as possible. That advantage over Jan Ulrich right now is a minute and 50 seconds. And if he were to look to his right down the valley he would see riders spread over probably 40 minutes tonight this man has done the damage and he'll say a big thank you to team telecom who i think have blown their tactics and set up a great ride for armstrong morrow now cracks the frenchman who won the prologue is off the back he cannot follow the pace of ulrich ulrich is going to be number two again in the tour and uh, he has no answer to the strength of armstrong he's now just going a little bit harder and he's pulling away, they've gone past Jean de la Tour, there he is. The unlucky Laurent Roux has been passed, and so too Balocchi has gone by him as well, but Balocchi has now been dropped by Ulrich. Ulrich again, at number two in the Tour, never finished less than second, he's won it once, he is now going to be number two again. I can't see him matching Lance Armstrong, but there'll be a great time trial tomorrow. There's going to be a big battle, this man is on the part of Alpe d'Huez, which will suit him more than the early kilometres. The, the incline has slightly levelled off, he can use his big gear, he's a powerhouse, this man. It's like having a car with a V8 engine, he's a huge bike rider, Jan Ulrich. Armstrong always gives him the compliment of saying he is the most talented bike rider in the world, but this man is probably the bike rider in the world that works the hardest. He trains the hardest, prepares specifically for certain stages of the Tour de France. He takes a lot of time out of his year, to come onto training camps and look at these mountains, tries himself out over the mountains. He's probably ridden Alpe d'Huez six times this year, and he's also been to look at the time trial stage tomorrow on a number of occasions. He knows what's in store for him. I love Jan is the ride on the writing on the road right now, but I think the Tour de France tonight is going to love Lance Armstrong because he's putting it back into some kind of normality. This is Jan Ulrich, and we are certain now, I think, uh, to get the order of finish, Armstrong, Ulrich, Belocchi, Morrow, and that was the result of the Tour de France last year. The same four men are going to go over the line in that order now, because Ulrich is clear. So Ulrich is chasing. There is the man on the left, uh, Lance Armstrong. It is two minutes, they're saying now, back to Jan Ulrich, second man on the road. That is a huge gain over this man on the Tour de France. Look at the difference in the styles. Armstrong, the very fast pedaling cadence there, around about 95 rhythms per minute. He's up into the outskirts of the town of Alpe d'Huez right now. The road is perfectly clear. It's kept clean by all of the barriers. It's safe for Armstrong to ride into the town. I only hope that Eric, the photographer, doesn't come out and try and get a front head on shot of Armstrong, as happened to Guirini a few years ago. Armstrong is totally concentrated right now. He's got that jaw set in motion. He's looking for the victory. He won't even smile till he gets to the last kilometre, but you can see now, Phil, that jersey is absolutely drenched in sweat. Three and a bit kilometres to go for Jan Ulrich. Completely different style in the action of this man. He's, start, he's climbing on sheer power right now. He's mustering all the power that he can to keep a huge gear ticking over. 
but the Alp is almost behind him. The roads level a little bit very soon. He'll move up the gears and he will fly across the town itself and then make the left turn up to the line, which itself returns to an uphill finish. But it's all over now. He's broken the spirit of the stars of the tour. Now he's got to set about the long job of healing the damage done by that 30-minute breakaway the other day and pick off the lesser riders. It'll be a few days yet before he gets yellow. It'll be a few days, it'll be a long battle. This is going to be a very difficult week for all of these riders in the Tour de France because apart from the rest day, when the riders travel down from the Alps straight down to the Pyrenees, it will be always in the mountains, uphill. And that is going to be a lot of concentrated climbing. And that is something now must be going right through the mind of Jan Ulrich. Armstrong getting closer to the finish. He now is looking at seeing the next barrier on the road. That will tell him he is two kilometres away from the finishing line and very shortly he will come into the town square of Alpe d'Huez. He'll ride across the square, he will take the left-hand bend, which every bike rider in the world knows. We've seen it so many times on television before, and any of the ex-bike riders out there who've seen this know just exactly what it's like to go into that corner. It might look fairly flat, but I tell you what, it hurts after a long day in the saddle. So, as we go past the point where it was Eric, the famous photographer from France, who fell the Guerini, the man that won the stage here, when we last visited it two years ago, that's gone safely by now. We're now waiting for Armstrong to conquer the Alp, and the last American to win here was Andy Hampston, and he was on the Motorola team. They were teammates at the time, and that was a great Tour de France for Andy Hampson. He'd hoped that he would go on to win the Tour de France. He was always regarded as a hopeful. He actually finished fourth overall in that year's Tour, but I think as a great climber, he will have been happy to have taken out the Alpe d'Huez. At the moment, it looks very much as if that honour is going to go to Lance Armstrong. The only difference is that Lance Armstrong is probably going to go on to win the Tour de France, and that's only been done once before, back in 1952 by El Campionissimo himself, Fausto Coppi. This man, Phil, is totally programmed right now. He's ticking away every metre, just waiting to get himself closer to the finish. He wants to do huge damage in the Tour de France. He knows he has to. He has to pull back 31 minutes and 30 seconds on Francois Simon. I'm absolutely certain he will do that. He needs to pull back 14 minutes on Andre Kivilev, and he will do that by the end of this week if he keeps putting in performances like this. Well, by tomorrow, Kivilev will be about nine minutes ahead of him in the overall and probably in second place in the race. But remember that last year, in both time trials, Kivilev conceded three and a half minutes. There's another seven for us to look for. And, of course, the Pyrenees and tomorrow's time trial are still to come. Armstrong on course to climb from the depths of the Tour de France and win it again for the third time. This is Yoshiba Bolocki, a show of defiance here by the rider who finished third overall last year. He's still got Ulrich in his sights. I don't think he'd catch him as we go further up the road by two minutes now to Lance Armstrong under the kilometre to go. Just this splendid journey across the town where the crowd will just get a glimpse of this great rider and then cheer him home to the finish. Then the clock starts, then Lance will know what he's gained today. Well, if you stop the race right now, it'd be one minute and 55 seconds over Jan Ulrich, but Josiba Belocki is doing a magnificent comeback onto the wheel of the German. This man's style, Phil, from the bottom of this climb has not changed one iota. He's now getting into the big gears. It's the flatter part of the climb. Look at that. He's on the big chain ring right now. That will have 53 teeth on it, and he's putting the power in. He wants to open up as much time as he can over Ulrich. This is the Lance Armstrong we've seen in the past at Sestriere and at Hotekam. He's putting the pressure in, keeping the gap all of the time around about two minutes over his big challenger and this is the speed, this is unbelievable, he's on the town square right now he can breathe for a few moments as he negotiates this roundabout and in a few moments time he will take a left hand turn and face the final 400 metres, look at his face, he wants this win, he dreamed about this win, he will now go up alongside the greats and he's certainly setting himself up for a third win at the Tour he is about to win his eighth stage at the Tour de France since he won at Verdun back in 1993. This will be the greatest win because it's Alpe d'Huez, the mecca of world cycling. That's the bend that Greg LeMond once almost overshot as he was riding to win the Tour de France. Now are we seeing the foundations of the man who will win the Tour for the third time in Paris? Lance Armstrong will probably say, yes, you are. Six hours and 23 minutes. He had to bridge a six-minute gap to win 
on the stage. He has given us a tremendous demonstration. Yes, that's the one I wanted, and I've got it. That was a mean victory salute. He certainly wanted that win. He wanted to come out and put out all of the riders in this Tour de France.